really a, a monster offseason for Houston. We'll just talk a couple free agent people real quick here, or I'll just list them off. Dalton Schultz, Jimmy Ward, Sheldon Rankings, Shaq Griffin, Denzel Perryman, Devin Singletary, Robert Woods. I mean, a lot of guys coming in. Now, it's not great. I mean, these guys coming outside Jimmy Ward, we're not talking about total game changers here. But for a team that was horrible last season, I mean, it's valuable to have these veteran presences coming into the organization, just some guys who could st- um, stabilize some of the, you know, the weaknesses they've had. But this year is all going to be about C.J. Stroud. It's going to be about C.J. Stroud and D'Amico Ryans as first-year head coach. Here was something interesting that I saw. It's, you can make the argument, I mean, actually, I feel like it might be objective, that C.J. Stroud is the only quarterback in recent memory who significantly downgraded his weapons, his receiving weapons from college to the NFL. Think about who he had to throw to at Ohio State. We're talking Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and maybe the best guy of the group, Marvin Harrison Jr. Now he comes to Houston, and he's got 31-year-old Robert Woods, John Mechie, who, you know, thank God he's returning from cancer, but John Mechie But he's returning from cancer. Yeah, yeah, he's returning from cancer. He hasn't played in a year. And was battling cancer. Uh, and then you got Nico Collins and Dalton Schultz. So, I mean, there's some, there's some potential there for guys to, to break out. But when you're talking about, I mean, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, and Jackson Smith and Jigba would be one of the best receiving cores, corps in the league. So, so it's, it's going to be tough sledding in D'Amico Ryan's first year. This team is in complete rebuild mode and will likely be a disaster. But similar to the Colts, the measure for success will be the development of guys like Stroud, Will Anderson, John Mechie, and uh, Nico Collins. Do you, when you look at the Houston team, Ziggy, are you, are we, do you agree with that <laughs> to begin with? That it's it's all about development. Unlike the Colts, there's no hope that Demico Ryan steps in as an offensive <laughs> savant and just saves the offense. Yeah. I mean, look, over the past three years, the Texans have had four head coaches and have won eleven games. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Like it's, Ugh. it's bad, right? They should have had the first overall pick last year. If it weren't for Lovey Smith's revenge. Isn't that insane? <sighs> like this is, this they franchise they taken is, Bryce probably. Yeah. This franchise is just terrible and they don't have a first round pick next year. So you really need the guys who are on this team to be good. Now I don't mean good this year. I just mean developing. They have one player who we know is good on offense, Lamory Tunz. And the fact is, if you have to pick one good player on offense, it might as well be your left tackle, right? I mean, it might as well. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Like, left tackle is not the worst one, but they have preferably zero proven good players on defense. Now, they have a few who might develop, right? Derek well, Jimmy Singley, Ward. Jimmy I'm sorry. You got, you got Jimmy Ward. You got Jimmy You're right. Ward. Jimmy Ward is good. I, I take that back. Jimmy Ward is good, and he's shown he can be in San But he's, he's new. He's brand new. He's new. That might be alleviated by the fact that he's taking on a 49er system, but you've got one safety who's good. And otherwise... <laughs> a lot of question marks. A lot of question yeah, marks. Yeah, right. Like, again, Stingley might take a step forward. Desmond King could be okay. Will Anderson Jr. could be good. But, yeah, it's absolutely developmental year. It's unfortunate when you have to trade away arguably your best offensive player in Brandon Cooks, but he, he was sick of being there. I don't know. I worry that... If C.J. Stroud doesn't get off to a hot start, it'll be really easy for him to lose confidence, right? He's on a loser franchise without a lot of good players surrounding him. And I'm not sure he's got the voice to step in and tell him that he can handle it. But I don't know. You know, that's certainly highly speculative. What's not speculative is that this is one of the worst teams in the NFL. I mean, the only thing with Houston, that maybe you say at the the beginning of the year, make it clear to Stroud, like, Obviously, you want to win games, but you know, given the roster they have, it's it's unlikely that they're going to probably even win five or six. Um, so you just got to nail nail in his head like this is about developing, getting better week by week, every single rep you take, improving. Um, because, they're because, fortunate yeah. they brought over the quarterback coach from San Francisco, Bobby Slowick, who has a lot of experience yeah. working, and he's working got a with rookie quarterbacks. He's got a big challenge in front of him because, like we just said, there's not really much around him from a skill position standpoint. Damian Pierce is good at running back, but really the guys he's throwing to, Dalton Schultz is probably your, your best target. And no offense to Dalton Schultz, but when he's your best target, it's a little bit concerning for an offense. Uh, and then defensively, yeah, like you said, 
Jimmy Ward is the one real bright spot there. I think Will Anderson could come in and be awesome, and he's going to have to be a star. Like, like border, like that's it. He has to be a star from day one for this defense to, to really even have a chance. Um, but Derek Stingley is someone, we'll talk about him in a little bit. He's someone that I have my eye on heading into uh, next season. Actually, we could just move on to that right now, the non-quarterback player to watch. I just have to say one last thing yeah. about the Texans. You know how I said at the beginning of the segment they've won 11 games in the past three seasons? Yeah. Last year was the first year, only year of those three they finished last in the division. So when you talk about a putrid division with putrid teams, I mean, if there's a bright spot for the Texans, it's this. Was it Jacksonville the, both years? Yeah. God, oh my if God. If the defense and <laughs> offense outperform expectations a little bit and the Jaguars stumble... The Texans could theoretically win this division. I mean, <laughs> I'm just, it's said, that bad. You opened, it is you that opened bad. this segment by saying there's no hope for Houston. I think there's no hope. But if there's hope, it's a it's, race to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would, it would probably take a Trevor Lawrence injury. And then, Look, if tr- then all, all cards are on the table. Yeah. We'll see. It's right, bad. The, the non quarterback player to watch, we may as well keep this as part of the. Texan segment here. Uh, I've got my eyes on Derek Stingley. And um, when you look back at just his career so far, I'm going back to LSU too. In 2019, that great, great team, he was amazing. He was the best defensive back in the country, let alone freshman. He was, he was a freshman that year, but he was the best defensive back in the entire nation in college football um, and immediately had first round grades on him like top five picks so he battles injuries 2020 2021 he gets hurt again basically misses all of his last year and still ties the record for highest drafted cornerback ever going third he was picked ahead of sauce Gardner, and obviously sauce has completely overshadowed him sauce is already the best cornerback in football at this point so there's pressure on stingley in that regard but when you look at his play over the past what he's had one year in the nfl he only played nine games last season It was up and down, but you saw the potential and you saw a guy who, you know, when you flash as a freshman in college, it's likely that you have a lot of talent. I mean, guys just aren't that good and flame out normally. So I I like Derek Stingley to step up this year if he could stay healthy because injuries are obviously a concern, but they need him because that secondary is pretty weak outside of Jimmy Ward. And if he can come in and be a number one cornerback again, you're hoping Will Anderson can take a step up. I mean, he's one of the most important pieces on that team. He's a building block for the future. I, um, I, I think there's a lot of pressure on Derek Stingley to, to really come into form. And luckily, he has D'Amico Ryans there. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Adopting the 49ers defensive scheme as opposed to Lovey Smith's, I think, will help him quite a bit. The thing is, I mean, you talked about all the injuries. The biggest concern I have with Stingley, actually, is his health. His past three football seasons, he's missed a lot of games due to injury. Yeah. And he's barely played at all. We know how talented he is. And I know Sauce Gardner will almost certainly end up being the better NFL player. So Jets fans don't jump down my throat. But Derek Stingley has the potential to be a star cornerback. And we haven't seen him not live up to that. So taking on a new system, hopefully one that's a little bit more friendly. He'll get to learn from guys like Jimmy Ward, Mm -hmm. who know... You know, of course, Ward's a safety, but they know what it's like to play defensive back at a high level in the NFL. I think there's a lot to hope for of Derek Stingley. So if he's good, yeah, this Texans oh, yeah. defense could look a lot better. 